Okay, we're just waiting for people to get logged in here. And then we're checking roll, checking audio. We have a little buffer space here where we let students come in. And before they come into the campus, we check their audio and we give them a roll call. These are all students waiting for class to begin, and we work out some technical issues. So I'm going to move on to the campus now. What we have here is our bus area, our bus depot. And these buses can go to different locations, but today we have it just set for our negotiation class so students don't get confused. Move on to the main campus by boarding the bus. And this is our main negotiation campus. Students show up. Hello, Susan. Hi, hi. You sound good. Very busy this weekend, preparing for midterms. Okay, here we have H. Tota. Okay, Susan, if you want to, you can go ahead into the main building there. Go ahead and move on to the building. Okay. 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 Thank you.
Hey, Professor. Yes. I'm Susan. Uh, next week, I will take a picture for graduation. So I can't go to the RPG. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, let me see, that's next Monday. So all day Monday is picture taking? Uh, morning. So Monday morning is picture taking, and that's yes. true for everyone, isn't it? Uh, not, just, not just you, right? Uh, Fourth year. Fourth yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, that might be a little bit of a problem, but um, make sure you tell your classmates, your group mates especially. Okay. I think most of our students are third year, right? Yeah. So mostly everybody's third year, they should be okay, but fourth year would be a problem, I see. <laughs> okay, make sure you tell your group mates, that's most important. Okay, thank you. Thank you. For some students, I'm going to do a little bit of explanation. This is our main campus. And we're waiting for students to come on in. Usually I can greet them here a little bit while waiting and then encourage them to move on to the main building where we're going to have our lectures. We're going to move on to our classroom, so let me get going here. Everybody with me? We're going to look at part number seven and then part number eight. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Not that hard, I don't think. Let me just jump right in. People catch up with us here. Okay, then let's go into part number seven, asking questions. So everybody. Come on over here. Follow me. All right, everybody, come on in. Follow me over here. Going to room number seven. Everybody, room number seven.
Alright, we're going to just go ahead and jump into here because we're a little bit short on time from all that logging in problem. So, we're going to go right into room number one here for the vocab. Let's go ahead and jump right in. our vocab room. Right, everybody, I'm going to fly up here so we can see the word. Once you can fly up here, remember you can use control with your mouth. Control with your mouth and move your head up and down. And you can fly your avatar up there if you want to. Okay, here are word list, and I think we've covered this pretty good in our lecture pretty well. I'm not going to go over it in too much detail, although today's emphasis is on asking questions, key point, right? So this asking questions idea is to help us, especially in integrative negotiation. But of course, we ask questions to make things clear in every kind of negotiation, not just integrative, but for integrative, it's super important. Otherwise, you can't make progress, right? So let's look at some of the words here, such as this stay calm. That is a key one, right? Confrontational is a way that people sometimes ask questions. So be prepared for that. Sometimes people ask a question, but it's not really a question at all. Rather, it's a con being confrontational. You can have an objection or you can have a question, which we call an inquiry or inquire. Right? An inquiry is a, a noun and inquire is a verb. And, of course, you want to ask about things such as the requirements. And you want to look at some of the ideas related to how to resolve your problems. So you want to ask questions how to resolve and you would like to maybe put aside or put off unresolved issues. So anyway, these are some good words here and I think you should practice them. Of course, you're going to have to do them for your homework assignment, which is to make a video. So you'll be using them and then I hope beginning next week when we play our RPG game, you'll also have a chance to use some of these. So let's get ready to move on to the next room where we're going to kind of cover what is the main idea of this part. Okay, so let's all move on to the next room.
I'll come through this door here, everyone. We're going to move on to the introduction now. That's right, come on. There we go. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the introduction here. Alright, come on in everybody. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about this idea of asking questions. Everybody come on in closely. You can fly up to the slide if you need to. Okay, what we're talking about today is asking questions. Now, why is asking questions important? Asking questions is key to an integrative negotiation strategy. So, it's a way to find out more information and to explain information at the same time. So, in this example though, I want to emphasize a little bit different idea about asking questions. And so we begin with this very simple example here. And what does this example look like? It's about a father and a son talking to each other, right? What does the father want? He wants the son to do some chores around the house, around the flat. So he wants him to do some work. And what is the boy's reaction? The boy would like to not do the work, of course. So. How does the boy try to change the negotiation situation or slow down the negotiation or maybe get something to his advantage? What does he do? He asks questions. And so what kind of questions does he ask? Well, he asks questions that are not really questions at all. Now, we can call them kind of negative or we can call them rhetorical questions or there's different names for them, but negotiation, you'll know it when you see it, it's a question that you kind of already know the answer to what doesn't really have an answer or that's actually trying to tell you something kind of negative. So in this case, the young man is saying, the son is saying, um, well, what do you mean I have to do more work? And what exactly do I have to do? And the father's saying, well, you can't watch any TV until you do your work. And the boy is saying, well, 
you mean? Uh, exactly how much? What if I do a little bit? Can I take a break and watch some? And, and won't that won't that be a bad thing if I work so hard and then I'm so tired out I can't enjoy watching TV? Doesn't that ruin everything? So these are all questions. Yes, they have question marks at the end of them. They're not really questions, are they? What they really are is a way for the boy to get out of what the father wants him to do. In other words, he's trying to change the conditions of the negotiation situation. or trying to tell his father something or make his father understand something. Like, I'm too tired to enjoy TV if I have to also do my chores. Well, maybe the father would agree, but in this case, the father does not agree. He takes a tough stand. So, this is a negotiation. And just like the negotiations you're going to practice, it's very similar. You can use questions to kind of push the other side to think something is true or to change what they think about the situation. So, this is a very simple example. Let's move on to the next room where we have a more complex business example. Everybody follow me and we'll move on to the next room. Everybody follow me. So we're waiting for some people here to get moving. Come on, hello, hello, come on. In this business situation, we have a good example of how to ask questions to get more information. So if we look at this example here, we have these two gentlemen. Um, this is Ben and Susan, a man and a woman, okay, Ben and Susan. Okay, so if we look at Ben and Susan here in this dialogue, then we have an example of integrative tactics. And I think the idea here is ask more questions to get more information. And then once you get more information, then you can help the other side by understanding what they need. So in this case, questions can lead to integration. But it's not just simple always. So I like this example here in the book because if we look here, we can see there's a lot of time at the beginning when there's disagreement or how to say um, tough stands. That's to say that both sides don't really give in very much, do they? Both sides take a tough stand. If you read through the negotiation, you can watch my video. I read through it for you and with you. I hope you can practice it. But you can see that it takes quite an amount of time for both sides to even begin to understand the other side and think what the other side wants. 
that's a sign of a tough negotiation and that's not a bad thing that's actually a way to get more that's actually a way to win so how does this work well take a tough stand as we said last week at the beginning give a little bit and then give less and less and the other side will think that you have less to give in this case we also put towards the end begin to ask questions to understand well what's the last thing that's holding us up what's the last thing we can do to get over the end of this negotiation because it's getting very hard so when you get a chance read through that negotiation watch my video and you get a good idea of what we're talking about use questions to help the other side understand your position your resistance points your target price and then the other side can use questions to also convey that information to you use questions to help the other side understand what you need so again questions are not always just questions like what is the price that's obviously a question but that's not really what we're talking about in this part of the book what we're talking about is how to use questions to maybe number one push the other side in a different direction change the outcomes change the situation so the other side thinks something different or number two how to understand the other side and how to help the other side understand you and by doing that you can begin to integrate if that's your goal or if you use the first way which is fool the other side into thinking something that's not true is true and how to win in a distributed negotiation right okay so that's the main point for this part let's go on to the next room word practice room Okay, this is our word practice room. Everybody catch up with us here. Okay, we still got a few people stuck in the other room. Give them a second to come on over. spend too much time here because we're short on time but these are great practices that you can use in your videos and you can uh, use these in your negotiation RPG also because remember one of the goals is we want to use more English in our negotiation right we want to practice as much as possible okay so these are just sample sentences and we're going to move on to the next room now to talk a little bit more in detail about this question situation so let's move on to the follow-up room so everybody follow me to the next room
All right, everybody, come on over here. Okay, in the follow-up, we're just going to quickly introduce kind of a basic idea here, which I already covered in my uh, video lecture, which you should remember to watch online, right? The first thing I want to talk about is this communication model, which is over on the left-hand side over there on the slide. And I think it's in your book, so you should be able to see it very clearly. And what we're talking about in the communication model is it's really easy to misunderstand somebody's meaning. Or we can turn that around and say it's very hard to make your meaning very clear. It seems like something that should be easy. And in our example, this seems very simple, doesn't it? In this example, what we have is a man talking about his son who said, my son likes cars. That seems very, very simple. But in reality, it ends up that the other person can easily misunderstand the meaning completely, thinking that his son is not a mechanic, but rather playing with toy cards. So that's a great example of just how a very simple situation is made to be complicated. Now imagine if you're talking about prices and shipping and quantity and boxing and packaging and all these other things we talk about when we negotiate for our products and services. It's really easy to get things all mixed up, to get confused, even things like money amounts. How much does something cost per unit and how much is a unit or per box and how many units in a box or even something like currency. Are we talking about USD? or um, renminbi or taiwan new taiwan dollars what is it we're talking about we may be talking about different things and we don't even know it so this idea is communication is hard so how do we overcome it well the best way to overcome it is through questions so here are some examples in our book in the follow-up of how to ask questions and what do we do? We focus on some areas, such as who, what, where, when, why. I'm sure you've heard this before, right? Who, what, when, where, why are ways to ask questions or things to ask questions about. And who, who did what, where, when, and why did they do it? So by doing this, we try to clarify. We try to clarify. Also, we can have things called open-ended questions. Open-ended questions means I ask you something, but I don't really have any clear idea what you're going to say. So I'll just kind of give you a big question. It's called an open-ended question or open question. How do you like our new offer, for example? That's a really big question, not something that's very specific, such as would you like to accept a 10% discount? That's much more specific. So how do we make things... Uh, have we asked questions about things we don't know? We need to have an open-ended question. Okay, leading questions is kind of what we saw with the father-son situation, right? That is, you ask a question, but it's not really a question at all. Actually, it's kind of the answer included in the question. So, in this way, we have many different kinds of questions you can see inside this chapter. We have how to ask something calmly, how to have a planning question, how to have a question that's also a compliment, uh, how to have an insight question, a focus question, and then we have a series of negative questions over here that you can see. 
what are negative questions? Well, there are different kinds of negative questions. And for example, one of them is called a loaded question. A loaded question. For example, I could ask you, how much money did you steal? How much money did you steal? And you say, well, I didn't steal any money. But because you answer the question, it makes it sound like you kind of did, but you're trying to lie about it, you see? So the question is not really a question, it's an accusation. We have things like emotional questions and trick questions, take it or leave it questions, which kind of give pressure to the other side. Now these are not so always no, so negative as much as pressure oriented. Don't you want to finish before lunch? It's kind of a question, but it's also giving you pressure. I don't want to finish before lunch. You can also make a strong demand. You can also threaten to withdraw by saying something like, if we can't, can't we come to a conclusion? If not, we'll have to withdraw. Something like this. Okay, so there are different types of questions. And I think the key point here is, questions are not always just questions. Number one, questions are a way to help us make our communication clearer. More clear, right? So we don't want to get confusion. So we need to ask things like, what is the currency? Uh, what is the exact number of units per box? What are the um, parameters of the shipping time? By asking these questions, we make our communication clear without a doubt. There's also questions where they're not really questions, but rather they're trying to be negative. And that is push the other side to feel threatened. And another kind of question is a question that's not really a question, but it's to give the other side some pressure, maybe time pressure, maybe pressure to have some kind of conclusion, something like this. Okay, so there are many different kinds of questions. And I think the thing to learn about here is a tough negotiation can be very tough because both sides are asking questions, but the, actually their questions are tough questions or accusing questions, accusations, troublesome negative questions. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next section now and wrap up this part. So follow me to the next room, which is going to be room number six, exercises. Okay, well, you don't need to wait too long because I just wanted to remind you there are exercises in the book. I want you to try to do the exercises when you get time. Not a big deal. Not very hard, but they're good practice. And that's what we need to do when we need to practice, right? Okay, so the key point here is to practice this and then do your assignments, which are going to be the final assignments actually for the video. After this, there's no more video to be made. After this, we're doing just RPG. So, I'll put some effort into your final couple of assignments. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the main hallway. And then we're going to take a short break. And then we're going to go to the final part of our book for this semester. So, everybody can follow me out to the main hallway. First, we go out the exit door. Then we take the exit up to the escalator, which goes back to the main hallway. Okay, so here I go. 